Hey, it's Anfa. I'm an electronic music producer and sound designer, but I only use open source software and Linux. Today I'm going to show you how to pitch correct vocal recordings using X42 Autotune in Ardor. First I'm going to play you um, a result of my work with this uh, so we can see what can be done and how does it sound. And then we're going to record something new and I'm going to show you the process that um, leads to the results uh, that I got here. So here is the corrected version. I am testing And now I'm going to disable all the X42 Autotune plugin instances and let's listen again. This is raw. I am testing X42 Autotune. If you haven't had any ear training, you might think like the they sound pretty much the same, but nope. Um, so how was this done? You see, X42 is a pretty simple but effective plugin. This is the user interface. I'm actually going to scale it so it's easier to see. Does it go higher than 200%? It doesn't. Okay. So this is X42 Autotune. I'm going to turn it on to... I'm going to install turn on input and now you can see that it's constantly listening to my voice and trying to identify the pitch that I'm that my voice uh, produces if I try to sing a note ah, uh, it will tell me what note it is in this instance that's an F and uh, it will tell me if I'm sharp or flat uh, now, the thing is, um, if you record a cappella stuff like what I did in this intro, it's not that easy to hear problems unless you have multiple voices, but then you can hear problems between them. But as soon as you're trying to tune your vocals to uh, an accompaniment, some backing track or any instruments at all, you're going to immediately hear <laughs> any intonation problems. And sometimes you don't have the skills or you don't have the time to re-record your stuff over and over. That's why being able to pitch correct your vocals is very useful. So um, I'm going to show you exactly how I made this. In each track, first I'm going to mute auto-tune and I'm going to play it to you. Each track, maybe let's do it like that. Uh I'm going to solo this and each track, uh, each vocal track, it's, it's an audio track, obviously, and it has a respective MIDI track. And that MIDI track is used to give X42 Autotune context and tell it that the vocal should sing these notes, nothing else. So try to find the closest one among these and snap it to that. I am testing. So you can see we can immediately see what kind of uh, problems we have. This is plus one semitone, so this is another note. This is half a semitone. And right now we have correction on. I am testing. So this would be sharp. This part would be sharp, but it's corrected. X. There is some uncertainty. X. And I'm using this MIDI note, you can see right here, it's playing there, uh, to make sure that we are playing this D-sharp and nothing else, because uh, there was some uncertainty and it wouldn't, wasn't sure, so the note was jumping around. If I mute this MIDI region, uh, 
you can hear there's this wobble. Uh, but because I provided this MIDI region and displaced the D sharp node, uh, the plugin knows what node should be there, so it snaps it to there. X42. And we can hear a little bit of a formant shift happening with this wobble. Our pitch is locked, but our formants are shifting. That's because X42 Autotune unfortunately doesn't feature any formant correction. Uh, that means that unfortunately with um, big uh, pitch differences, you're going to hear uh, formant shifting happening around. Because it's pitch shifting, which in turn shifts the formants, and it doesn't correct for that. So the formants are going to be a little bit skewed, which is uh, less than ideal if you want natural sound. Mm, but this is the only plugin that uh, does this kind of thing, and it accepts external MIDI input. Uh, there's another plugin called Auto Talent, which does uh, feature formant correction, but it doesn't have uh, a uh, auxiliary MIDI input that can be used to determine what the pitch should be. So that plugin is not as controllable as this one. That's why I'm using X42 Autotune. And of course, uh, this is not a problem if you're going for some weird um, effects, but uh, if you want to have very natural sounding vocals, this is unfortunately not ideal. Let's uh, listen further. X42 So if I open the automation lanes for this, maybe go show existing automation, you can see that I'm automating the filter. Mm, filter is this parameter here. Maybe I'll explain all the parameters now. So let's break down the UI of this plugin. On the left, we have this keyboard widget, which shows you the currently, mm, the currently detected note on the keyboard. There's just one octave because it doesn't need more. And below it, it's a tuning indicator, which shows you how off the pitch the, the detected note is. So it's going to show you if the note is flat, then it's going to go to the left. Zero is dead on. And to the left, we have half of a semitone and then one whole semitone. That means if it goes up there, that means it's already a different note. So it was here, then it goes here. I'm going to explain all of these widgets in a second. So this shows us how in pitch we are. Now, I love this plugin because of that measurement, because it's very useful for recording, not as a, as a correction tool, but as a monitoring tool. So when I sing, I very often, actually all the time, I watch this plugin and I, um, when I listen and I see if I'm off pitch and if I'm singing the correct note, I can verify. It helps me train my hearing and it helps me identify problems as they happen when, when I'm singing. So that when I sing something out of tune, uh, let me try some different random note. Uh, it's in pitch. Uh, if I'm singing this, uh, I know I'm flat, so I should be going up. Uh, it's also a great game to just open this up and try singing so that you get dead on. It's very helpful if you can play an instrument. Uh, for example, just use a piano patch. Because this way you can train train yourself to be able to sing in pitch. And this is a very, very helpful visual aid. So if you don't have great hearing, this can help you train your ears. So you will be able to perceive when you're flat, when you're sharp, and sing better. However, if you didn't manage to sing better or perfectly, you can use this tool to fix mistakes after you've recorded your, your vocal lines. Okay, let's go uh, further. So here is this piano widget. What we can do also here is disable some notes. So let's say in my melody, there is only C, E, and A. 
only these three notes. You can see that now we are talking. That's a A. That must be C. And that must be E. So we can limit the selection of notes. And if our melody has a known key, you can just dial in this key. You can also right click and here just choose a key. So if you right click on this uh, keyboard widget, you can select a C, a C major key or a minor, D minor, or you can D sharp minor or D flat minor. Or we can select all and then it enables all the notes. So it's a chromatic scale and not a particular one like G major or A minor, which is equivalent to C major. You can see that it disables all the black keys. It might not seem like that, but that's what it does. Okay, so this is the key selection. There's also a pitch bend widget that responds to MIDI pitch bend automation. Uh, to the right, we have um, a MIDI panic button. That means if, if the MIDI input gets stuck, then this resets it. There's this mode. By default, it's in auto. There's also MIDI, where it only... actually perform correction when you play a MIDI note. Or there's manual, which means it will ignore MIDI input and only pitch correct based on the key you define here. And I think usually auto is the most... Uh, is the easiest one to work with because you know that if you need you can specify a note and to snap it to there to remove this wobble effect but if you don't then it's going to try to do it automatically okay next thing is MIDI channel it can of course listen to multi to a specific MIDI channel so for example I could actually have one MIDI track for all three voices and just use different MIDI channels and set auto-tune plugins on each track with a different MIDI channel, like one, two, three, whatever. Omni means it listens on all MIDI channels, basically. So it's a bit easier to have it on separate MIDI tracks, I think. Um, next is fast mode. Fast mode is going to reduce the, the latency. If you enable this, you can see that now the latency is 256 samples. If I disable that, it's going to be 21.3 milliseconds. This is, of course, uh, the millisecond value is uh, based on s the sample rate. I'm working in 48 kilohertz sampling rate, so if you're working 44.1, that's going to be different. Um, it's going to be a bit longer. Now there's tuning. Tuning, of course, is the bass uh, A note. So if you're uh, singing in A44 tuning, which is the standard, that's the thing you, you want. But you can also offset it between 400 and 480, so we have 40 hertz up and down. If you right click, you will reset it to default. Bias determines uh, how much it's going to uh, prioritize existing notes. So if you go and make this higher, uh, uh, you can see that it snaps when we now, when a bias is at zero, it snaps to a different note when we reach. Uh, half a semitone of detuning. Uh, it never goes beyond. If I make this default 0.5, uh, it goes about here, so like probably 0 0.6 semitones. And if you go all, to, all the way to 1, uh, I can go almost right here. So bias will let you go more out of tune before it snaps to another note. But the default 0.5, I think, is pretty sane. Another one is filter, and that's pretty important. <laughs> filter determines how fast it's going to track the pitch. And basically, this sets the amount of smoothing on the pitch correction while the current note does not change. If it does change, the filter is bypassed and the correction jumps immediately to a new value. So this is pretty much like how much is it flattening each particular note's uh, Mm, uh, pitch. So 
If we make it faster, it's going to like squash our pitch more. So probably it's going to be better at removing vibrato. If we go lower, it's it might not catch the vibrato or slow pitch ramping between the notes until it snaps to a different note. So basically going too fast makes this sound robotic. Uh, making go too slow may make it miss like uh, pitch problems. So you're, it's not going to be as effective. And finally, correction determines the amount of correction that is applied. One means it's going to uh, tune your, your performance exactly to what it should be. So it's going to snap it back to zero. And then 0.5 me means it's going to snap it only halfway there. And zero, of course, means no correction. So the plugin is then not going to perform any correction. It's going to only show you uh, what's going on. And this is, uh, if I'm going to use this as a monitoring tool, I'm going to turn down this to zero. However, because it introduces 20 milliseconds of latency, when I'm going to sing and use this for monitoring, I'm going to put it on a separate bus and record on a track that, is, that doesn't have this plugin on, because then I can software monitor my vocal uh, without having this additional 20 milliseconds of latency. Of course, you can enable fast mode, uh, which will reduce that latency, but that wasn't added until uh, recently, so yeah. There's also offset, which um, you can use to introduce or reintroduce some vo some pitch expression like pitch bends or vibrato if you automate it in a zigzag fashion. Uh, so we can go two semitones up or down, or you can use this as a static uh, pitch shift, and basically that's it. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's all the user interface details you need to know. Let's now maybe record a, tr a vocal performance and then try and correct it using this plugin. I'm going to mute all these tracks uh, or even just disable them and hide them. I'm going to make a new track. And record some vocals. Okay, I'm also going to create a MIDI track. I'm going to call this Melody. I'm going to call this Voice and Melody. Ah, let's see how bad it sounds when I'm not tuning it in post. Let's, let's listen, listen to this. this. Ah. What I'm going to do now is insert X42 Auto Tune. So let's go to Plugin Manager, X42 Auto Tune. There's also a microtonal version. I haven't used it because I'm not into microtonal music. Let's enlarge the user interface. I'm going to make enlarge the master track so we can have it on screen and have this all nice and large. Okay, let's listen and monitor our performance. I'm going to disable correction for now so it's not correcting anything. Ah, let's see how bad it sounds when I'm not tuning it in post. Is it gonna sound awful? 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 Ah, yeah. There's a lot of vibrato and it's jumping all over the place. Let's enable correction now and see what, what happens. Ah, let's see how bad it sounds when I'm not tuning it in post. Is it gonna sound awful? 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 Ah, yeah. Now, if I turn the fast, uh, the filter all the way up to fast, let's hear what that will do. Ah, let's see how bad it sounds when I'm not tuning it in post. Is it gonna sound awful? 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 Ah, yeah. So that's the T-Pain mode. Well, I'm not going for this sound right now, so let's try medium or medium rare. Now the thing is, right now the plugin goes like all the way up. It just levels out all the pitch all the time. So what we can do is use automation to change the amount of correction at each point so that we can disable correction where we don't need it and enable it and enable it just where we need it. Ah, let's see how bad it sounds. So usually I don't want to pitch correct the starts of the note because it sounds uh, unnatural. Uh, and I can. Uh, we are going sharp in this note, so I need to add in some correction. I'm going to ramp it up to 
a hundred percent and then ramp it back down again. Let's see. Ah, uh, let's see how bad it's. Ah, uh, let's see. Ah, let's see how bad it sounds when I'm not tuning it in post. We have a lot of vibrato in here, and that's, uh, I think it's pretty centered. We can see if we can flatten it out. Ah, in post, is it? <laughs> yeah, it converts our vibrato into this weird uh, formant wobble, which is not necessarily a better thing. It in post. However, we could like um, also automate the filter so that we can. Um, you know what? Let's uh, change it to right mode so that it inserts a point determining this exact value here. Now we can change it to play mode, and if we go all the way down, it's fast, and then it's going to be slower. So I'm going to go for slow. So enable this pitch correction, make it strong, but make it slow. So it should f pass through our vibrato. It, in post, is it, it sounds much more natural. It in post, is it gonna sound a fool? We can maybe make it faster here. Fool. Oh, we, we're not correcting anything. So let's, uh, let's enable the correction here. Sound a fool. <laughs> that sounds bad. Uh, let's make the filter slower. Sound a fool. And I think in this part we actually need to specify a MIDI note we're gonna snap to. Let's do that. So I have a MIDI track. Now X42 Auto Tune by default comes with a sidechain input enabled and is going to take a MIDI input. So if I click in here, I can select melody which is this track, this MIDI track here, and it will take the MIDI output of that track and feed it in here. So now, let's close this. If I press a key, uh, it goes to the melody track and that MIDI data goes to the X42 Autotune plugin. Now, because of course we don't want to have this piano sound audible in the final track, we can either mute this because the send this is the send that, that sends the MIDI data to X42 Autotune. This is pre-fader, so it doesn't care. Uh, we can mute the track and it's, gonna, it's not going to produce sound, but the MIDI data is going to still go through, as you can see. Uh, so, we can unmute this track and insert a MIDI region. A fool. Sound a fool. Sound a fool. Now if I mute this media Sound region, a fool. you can hear that the pitch is jumping all around. It's it's like trying to uh, snap it to uh, neighboring notes, and that's no good. And if we added just this little note Sound here, a fool. makes it sound better. I'm gonna mute this track so it doesn't interfere, and we can just hear the vocal. Sound a fool. Let's mute it. Sound a fool. Sound a fool. So this is very useful that you can define exactly what note or notes, because if you play, if you put multiple notes Sound in here, a fool. you can see we've defined A and also F sharp. Sound a fool. And then X42 Autotune can decide which is closer and snap the note to that. But we don't want F sharp, we want just A. Um, sorry, A. Sound a fool. A fool. And now this is all gonna be the same note, so let's try and do this. Sound a fool. A fool. And of course, if we go all the way up with correction, it's going to sound unnatural and weird. Fool. A fool. It, it does snap the pitch, though, so. If that's a problem that we're facing, it can do this. So maybe slicing this note into multiple ones is going to make it easier because we can play and stop. Awful, awful, ah yeah. And we don't need to specify it. Ah, uh. 
Let's mute the MIDI region and listen. Ha yeah. Ha yeah. Oh, we have correction at zero, so it's not doing anything. That's why it sounded the same. Let's go with it like this. Ha yeah. Now that's awful. <laughs> ha yeah. So we are going way overboard with this correction and it just doesn't work here. Ha yeah. Hi, yeah. So sometimes in transition between notes, I would drop the correction to zero for a, for a short while to let it like naturally transition and then we punch the correction back in. Hi, yeah. Hi, yeah. It's still pretty weird. I'm gonna make the correction faster and see. Hi, yeah. Let's make it even faster there. Ha yeah. Ha yeah. Okay, let's mute the autotune plugin and listen to the original. Ha yeah. It's a wobbly. Ha yeah. This is not wobbly in pitch, it's wobbly in formants. Unfortunately, this plugin doesn't correct formants. I wish it would because it's very useful that it has this auxiliary MIDI input and it's very powerful. It's really cool for some specific um, psychedelic vocal effects, which I've demonstrated in a different video, so I'm not going to do that here. And yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. How to use X42 Orchestra Tune. Let's now add some reverb. Oh, maybe this one. Ah, let's see how bad it sounds when I'm not tuning it in post. Is it gonna sound awful? Awful, awful, ha yeah. Awful, ha yeah. So there you have it, X42 Auto Tune. I hope this video was useful. As you can hear, the results are varied. Uh, it's not. It's definitely not a replacement for something like Melodyne but it can fix some problems. And sometimes when you don't have time to re-record another vocal take or five or the 20, uh, I've used it with success and I've been able to complete projects that I wouldn't be able to complete otherwise without having to cringe every time I listen to them. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> uh, I hope this video was worth your time. Uh, also, huge thanks to all the people who are supporting me financially. Uh, if you, dear viewer, would like to join them, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa, where you can give me a buck or two every month. Yeah, and also you can join my community chat on Rocket Chat or Discord. The links are in the video description. You can also download the project file uh, that I've made here and you can experiment with it. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Oh, let's see how bad it sounds when I'm not tuning it in post. I bet it's gonna sound awful, awful. Oh yeah. If we make it faster, it's going to like squash our pitch to each note. Mm -hmm.